I built this cheap, simple, high-powered power bank with a capacity of 25,000 milliamps. You simply plug things in to run them, and then you plug the power bank into the wall, and it'll charge it. It even supports fast charging for larger electronic devices. Today, we're going to turn these 18650s into a power bank. Here we have an IP 5328 P charging PO. Gonna use some 18 gauge wire to connect everything up. I'll be soldering even though that is not recommended. Soldering station here. Gonna need some solder. Wire strippers. Gonna use a multimeter, some sandpaper. These square little lock in 18650 holders. I had some plexiglass laying around. I'll have to clean it off from an earlier project. This stuff is really cheap. I'm gonna use it to box up the power bank. Some hot glue may be needed. And I've got super glue. And that is it. First thing we're gonna do is check the voltage of all of our batteries because they need to be the same. If you got your batteries new, then they should just be the same. I would. I tested the capacity of these. They are 3,200 milliamps each. Um, so a couple of them were actually different Here voltages, so I had to switch them out. But I did that, and we're all good to go. And don't worry, I'll add in the description where you can get high-quality, reliable batteries. And like this, and you just clip, click them together, kind of like Legos. Just piece them together. Then I was thinking... Um, this would be on the minus, this is the plus. So simply just need to route a wire here and a wire there. The pieces that stick out here on the end make it so it's not flush. So I'm gonna sand those down. I'm So I decided actually cutting these nubs off might be better than sanding them. sand the tops and the bottoms of these and it'll help the solder stick better so that's what we're doing here and the whole idea with this is we want to get the solder on the battery a good connection as quickly as possible without overheating them we do not condone soldering to these batteries but if you're going to do it do it right I need to sand it we're going to use high heat with the soldering iron we're going to sand we're going to use flux and all these things will help so we can Put the soldering iron on the battery for the least amount of time and heat them up as little as possible. Here I'm grabbing my flux and on, this is the positive ends of the battery. We're connecting all the positive ends together and then all the negative ends. I'm, what I'm showing you here is I'm not putting that much because flux will help the solder flow and it, you don't want the solder going to the ends of the cells here because it could potentially short circuit. That's why you need to be extremely careful when doing this. Another thing to note is you need a high powered soldering iron and a large tip to transfer the heat quickly. Now I'm gonna go ahead and heat my soldering iron up real hot. I go around 400 degrees Celsius You'll find what works best for you. Getting my solder ready here. I'm gonna tin the soldering iron, pre-tin it, and then we're gonna tin every pad here. And since there's already solder, I just like, or since there's flux already there, excuse me, I like to put just a good size glob on the tip, and then that way I don't even have to add more. I can literally just push it down on the top of these batteries for a couple seconds, and that's it. See, that only took like two to three seconds. We really don't wanna do more than like four or five seconds max, and even that's probably too much. Not the prettiest job, but all these have good connections to the cells. Simply gonna do the same thing to the negative ends of the cells.
this part is a little tricky, not too bad. Um, we're just gonna need to strip the wire where it goes over the solder. So I just use my tools here to carefully cut this, um, the insulated area off so that the wire can be soldered on to er the top of every single battery. We're gonna be connecting all the all the top ends of the cells to each other. Just be patient, be careful, work slowly, and this shouldn't be too hard. I use a sharp edge to cut right here so the insulation come off, and then I use my tweezers to fully pull it off. And that worked pretty well for me. Not gonna make you watch the full thing, so I sped it up here and in different parts throughout the video. Now I'm tinning my wires here. I'm gonna put it in the helping hands. Just gonna add a little bit of solder to each section of exposed wire. That way we can heat it up over the top of the cells and it'll make a nice joint. And I like to use tweezers just to hold everything in place. Definitely wouldn't use your hands, you'll get burnt. Same thing goes here, speed is the key. Working pretty high heat. I think I turned it down just a little bit um, at this point, like 370 Celsius for me. Um, and that worked really well. You're gonna hold your soldering iron on there until you get a nice, solid, smooth soldering joint. Now that we've connected two rows together, we can go ahead and connect every cell together by doing these vertical strips. I found the key to this since you already have stuff soldered on you don't want really don't want to put your soldering iron on too long because your the other parts of the wire could unconnect on you but you want to go long enough that it really the solder really melts in and you have a solid connection simply do the exact same thing with the negative ends connecting them all together and voila you have created a battery to turn it into a power bank we simply need to connect this charging po to it the motherboard so i'm just using a little bit of super glue and then gonna place it right on top here i chose to use super glue because it bonds pretty quick and um, it's pretty strong but it's not permanent i would be able to pry this off if i needed to replace the board for any reason a little bit of weight will help it bond better just a couple minutes for that to set and it is all ready to go we just have to connect the pads the positive and negative pads on here to the batteries, just one connection. So just cut those to size and solder them on and it's ready to go. Now that bolt ends are connected, it should be ready to charge up. Just plugging it in here to test it out and the indicators lit up great. I chose to use plexiglass because not everyone has a 3D printer because um, those are expensive and plexiglass is pretty cheap um, and it's not too hard to work with. You're just going to line it up like I'm showing you here, make some marks, and then that little tool there is just a couple dollars. You just strike down repeatedly and then once you've done that multiple times, you can just snap them off. I needed a couple of spacers, which you can just get from the hardware store. Put the spacers on. Added more super glue and just glued it right on top and put weight on until it was done drying. Same on the other side. And then one for the top. And that to me will be enough protection. <clears throat> I like how minimalistic it looks and I think it's really cool how it turned out, how you can see all the connections. Here I'm just testing the power output and it looks like I was just getting normal charging out of the USB slots. So then I decided to try the USB-C. The blue indicator came on and I believe that indicates fast charging. So that's awesome. So I've been using this little power bank for a couple weeks now and it's done really good. I've charged up my phone a ton of times. This can charge your phone, I think it's seven or eight times without having to recharge it. These cells really do have a large capacity. It's got 25,000 milliamps about. Um, so I've been really impressed with this. Thank you everyone for watching. Um, please let me know if you have any questions, if you were 
able to build this. I'm gonna link everything down below in the description. With the cost, it should only be around 25 bucks, which I think is a great deal. And it looks pretty cool. Thanks for watching.